My friend Ryan knows this girl, Sarah Fincher, who actually went out to the old dredge and saw this thing. No way. What's a dredge? Yeah, and she even got it on film. Again, what's a dredge? And what did she get on film? Some creature ghost thing. It hangs out in this old building, which is actually a giant machine. It's called a dredge, and in the mining days, it would chew up the ground looking for gold. It actually moved along while it did it, leaving behind a creek bed. Whoa, hold on. Back up from the history lesson. Ghost thing? Apparently this guy named Joe Bush got caught in these huge gears and was pulled into the works. He ended up out the other end with a mangled leg and drowned in the creek. Anyway, now he haunts the place, dragging his leg along. And this Sarah person took some video and it's real. So what's this thing look like? From what I hear, you don't want to know. Hi, this is Patrick Harmon, the writer of the Skeleton Creek series, and I'm here in front of the dredge where the video parts of this story were actually shot. I will never forget the first time that I saw this thing. Uh, I immediately thought that it was the perfect setting for a ghost story. What's amazing is that it turns out that a lot of what I wanted to write is actually true. There's also one guy that got killed on this dredge, and there's an urban legend about how he still sort of comes out at night. And let me tell you, you do not want to be in this thing at night. Um, who knows what's in there? Yeah, I can tell you this, it's creepy. The Skeleton Creek story is unlike anything you've ever experienced. You're going to start by reading 25 pages in Ryan's journal, and then you're going to come to a page and you're going to find Sarah Fincher's web address. You're going to put in a secret password and go to that site and watch part of the story. And you're going to go back and forth like that all the way to the end. Ryan and Sarah's story started on this dredge, but it really was only the beginning of their story. In the third Skeleton Creek book, The Crossbones, Ryan and Sarah are going to journey all the way across the country. You're going to see some of the most haunted places in the world. You'll be able to see them, you'll be able to read about them. It's going to be an amazing journey. But I'll tell you this much, all roads lead back to this dredge in Skeleton Creek. Posing as a good scientist is about to unleash a virus that could wipe out half the planet. And there's only one person who can stop him. Teenage Secret Service agent Alex Ryder. Can he survive a bomb, poison needles, and hungry reptiles? Find out in Anthony Horowitz's Alex Ryder, Crocodile Tears. When was the last time you read a book that was so extraordinary that you couldn't wait to tell your friends? When was the last time you read about characters so real you couldn't stop thinking about them? And when was the last time you felt fear? It's going to happen on my 16th birthday. We are totally connected. You can't do this. You'll have to give something in return. And when did you love someone so much that you didn't care that they weren't mortal? It's time to experience the book that has everyone talking. Beautiful creatures will capture your heart, then stop it cold. Pick up your copy at your Scholastic Book Fair. It's time. Everyone knows that clones are like the dumbest things walking on two feet. It's embarrassing when mom starts preaching power to the clones. I mean, I'm all for equality, but really, they're only three-fifths human. Does any of this seem familiar to you? Or is it just history repeating itself? Hi, I'm Patricia C. McKissick. My husband, Fred, my son, John, and I wrote The Clone Code. Liana is a typical teenage girl, and she has a lot going for herself. Congratulations, you have been selected to be part of the all-virtual school. She spends most of her waking hours on her calm glasses that enable her to virtually go anywhere, anytime. Then one day, the unthinkable happens, and Liana's life is changed forever.
Leanna sees her mother arrested and charged with treason. She's chased down by bounty hunters with flesh-eating biobots. Through it all, Leanna uses her strength and her courage to keep looking for the truth. In a world of time-bending virtual reality, Leanna will discover some shocking information about herself and those around her. It was so difficult, she had a hard time accepting it. Experience the future's past in The Clone Codes. A copy of Clone Codes has been programmed to appear at your Scholastic Book Fair. Can a ghost be kept from carrying out a horrifying revenge? From award-winning author Avi comes one of his most suspenseful and scary tales. It was a time when the art of photography and the supernatural often crossed paths. Photography was seen by many as an act of magic, and some even considered it as a form of evil. Still, others saw it as an opportunity to witness the truth in the shadows. And the truth can be very shocking. As a photographer's apprentice to New York's elite society, Horace Carpentine will discover one of these truths when the image of a young girl who recently died begins to appear in his developing photos. She has come to reveal a chilling secret. Seer of Shadows, snap up a copy today. There is nothing more terrifying than the revenge of a ghost. Rebecca never imagined that she would find herself trapped one night in a cemetery. But worse than that, she couldn't have possibly imagined who or what would find her wandering among the crypts. My name is Paula Morris and I'm the author of Ruined, which is a ghost story and a murder mystery set in post-Katrina, New Orleans. After Hurricane Katrina, lots of things changed in New Orleans and I was talking with someone, a person who claimed he could see ghosts and he said that time had been fractured by the storm and that lots of ghosts were wandering the city. I started thinking about what would happen if a ghost lost her house, what if it was flooded or damaged by the wind, where would she go? And so I started thinking about the cemeteries, the old cemeteries in New Orleans, above grounds which are known as cities of the dead and thought about a ghost living there and that was really the seed of the story. People ask me all the time if I believe in ghosts and I always say I don't know. Lots of people in New Orleans tell me they've seen ghosts or they have ghosts living in their house but I've never seen one myself. The story is made up, that's one of the great things about being a fiction writer. You get to make up characters, you get to make up situations, you get to make up a whole world that they live in. That's what I really enjoy. Rebecca, the main character of Ruined is from New York, so she's never experienced Mardi Gras before. But she gets the chance to ride on a float during a Mardi Gras parade, to throw beads to the crowd and to see everything from the inside and have a great time. But she also gets to notice some of the more maybe sinister aspects of a parade. There's an element of danger along with the excitement in a night parade, and Rebecca gets to seal that for the first time. New Orleans has some dark secrets in its history and the novel explores many of those dark corners and tries to uncover what really used to go on. I would recommend this book to anyone who's interested in mysteries, especially something with a supernatural twist. Experience the dark side of Mardi Gras in Paula Morris's Ruined. my order. Hello? I'm 
here to pick up a pizza. Anybody? Can the terrifying secret that lies beneath the pizza shop lead the way for a takeover of a small Ohio town? Pick up your copy of Killer Pizza at your book fair. Next. Name? Olivia Hughes. Age? 13. Well, I think we have the perfect part for you, young lady. You can play the lead in The Blackish That Ain't Manhattan. My life is over. I keep having that same dream. They tell me, this is normal. Every teenager goes through this. It's a sign of maturity. Blah, blah, blah. I want my life back. I had everything. I landed the lead part in a national commercial for the Wacky Water Park. I said, national. And I had a new boyfriend who was only the hottest guy in junior high. What started as a simple blemish has turned into a full-blown disaster. Now my agent wants to rip up my contract, and my boyfriend wants nothing to do with me. I went from hit to zip. So, what does a person do when they've lost control of everything in their life? Olivia has to find out the hard way. And maybe what she finds isn't so bad after all. Zit Face. Look for it at your Scholastic Book Fair. We were taken away, pitted against each other. Four orphans vying for a stolen crown. Judged on our bravery, our strength, our wits. And most importantly, our willingness to lie. Each of us has a choice between living someone else's life and losing our own. My name is Delphine, and I remember that summer when Papa sent us clear across the United States to reunite us with Cecile, otherwise known as our mama. We weren't sure what to expect since she left us when I was four, but I can tell you I never expected this. It was one crazy summer. It was a crazy time for a lot of people back in those days. It was a time for change. Hi, I'm Rita Williams Garcia, and I wrote about Delphine and her sisters in One Crazy Summer. I write almost every day. I leave my home and get on the subway to Manhattan. I start right in on the train. I don't stop myself, I don't correct myself, I just write. I walk around New York City looking for a place to make myself comfortable while I write. I thought about Delphine, Benetta, and Fern trying to do the same thing, making themselves comfortable while they're in Oakland experiencing a new place and new people. You can't imagine how difficult that must be. How can I call Papa and tell him that Cecile takes our spending money and makes us eat takeout Chinese food every night on the floor in the living room because she has some secret going on in the kitchen? Delphine stayed strong. She was from Brooklyn, New York, and she knew how to take care of herself and her sisters. Delphine and her sisters learned so much that summer of 1968. They learn what's important to them. But for Delphine, one important question was answered. Mama, why did you leave us? Pick up a copy of one of the most celebrated books of the year, Rita Williams Garcia's One Crazy Summer. Look for it at your Scholastic Book Fair. The distress signal was clear, but difficult to believe. The Titanic was in trouble. That cold April night marked one of the most infamous tragedies in history that even now, a century later, continues to haunt and intrigue us. The actual survivors of this historic event tell their stories and bring the horrors of that terrible night to life in Titanic, Voices from the Disaster. Look for it at your Scholastic Book Fair. It's a wild day at the mall when a crazy Doberman leaps on stage at the local dog show. 
Griffin Bing, a.k.a. the man with a plan, steps in with his best plan ever. Operation Doggy Rehab. Can he turn this terrifying beast into the perfect pet, or will he and his friends end up in the doghouse? Find out in the latest book in Gordon Corman's best-selling Swindle series. Look for Show Off at your Scholastic Book Fair.